Kacha Bharti. So I am back with the second video of the video series on fiber to fabric class 7 science. And in this video, we are going to focus on silk. So we will study about the life cycle of a silk moth, sericulture, processing of silk and all of that. So this is going to be super interesting and informative too. Let's get started. <laughs> So when I talk about silk, the first thing that strikes your mind may be the silk saris or the silk dresses. Now in silk saris also, if, if you have ever been for to a sari shopping, you would have heard that there are many different types of silk that, that exist. Now you will have different names when you go to a shop. You, it may be a tasser silk, it may be a muga silk, uh, it may be a banarasi silk. So there are so many different types of silk which are available and all of them vary in their price, all of them vary in their quality. Even though they are all silk, they are all the natural silk. So now here in this section we will see from where do we obtain silk and from where do we obtain so many different varieties of silk and how do we process silk. So we will follow exactly the same method what we did for wool. So silk is obtained from silk worms. Now what are silk worms? Now have you seen butterflies? Now the way butterflies are silk moth they also look very similar to butterflies. They are called silk moth because they are like moths. But since silk is obtained from them, so they have been given the name of silk moth. Now in some stage of their lifetime, they are silk worms. Like they are a worm like creature which later becomes a silk moth. So silk moth is basically their adult form. But sometime before they remain as silk worm. So let's see what are silk worms. So silk worms are the caterpillar stage in the life cycle of silk moth. So let's see how a silk worm looks like and how a silk moth is. This is a silk moth which resembles a butterfly and this is a silk worm which resembles any other worm. So it is like creepy and it crawls on the ground. So that's how a silk worm looks like. So now this is the adult stage of this particular insect and this one is the caterpillar stage. So this grows to later to form a silk moth. But during this stage of silk worm it produces silk. That's quite interesting, right? That a tiny worm is able to produce silk and silk is something which we go mad about wearing silk saris, silk clothes and so many other stuffs. So let's see how exactly silk worm produces silk. Now, before we do that, we need to understand the life cycle of silk moth. You should be clear that what, when exactly the silk worm stage comes in the life cycle of a silk moth. So before that, let's quickly distinguish between a male and a female silk moth. Now in silk moth, if you look at their appearance, you can easily distinguish between a male and a female. So normally a male silk moth is smaller in size when compared to the female one. Moreover, the male moth is more active and the female moth is less active. If you look more closely, you will see that the female moth has a bigger abdomen when compared to the male moth. That's because the female moth lays eggs. So the eggs are being stored inside this part. So that, that's why it has got some extra space to accommodate those eggs. So when we talk about the life cycle of silk moth, we will talk about the female silk moth because they are the ones who produce eggs. And then the eggs gradually grow and over a period of time, they become the silk moth. Like how babies are born, babies, I mean, a, a tiny babies are born and then gradually they start growing and after around 18 or 20 years, they become an adult. So in a similar way, there is a life cycle of the silk moth as well. So as I said, female moth has a bigger abdomen. So let's see how exactly the life cycle of silk moth looks like. So this from here, the life cycle starts. So this is the female silk moth and the female moth will uh, produce eggs and they will lay eggs. So you see the eggs are being laid and the eggs are generally laid on the leaves of the plants. Now different silk moths, they uh, have different fooding habits. Now different types of silk moth produce different types of silk. That's because the silk worm, different type of silk worm will produce different types of silk. Now let us take example of one of the most common type of silk which is called the mulberry silk. Why is it called mulberry silk? 
because it is obtained from the silk worms which feed on the mulberry leaves so mulberry is a plant so a lot of silk worms lives on these mulberry plants and the silk obtained from such silk worms is called mulberry silk now these the female adult silk moth the, it lays eggs so this is where the eggs are being laid on the leaves of a plant and these eggs then will gradually grow to form a worm like structure called the silk worm so that's how the silk worm is formed now once the silk worm is formed what happens next so this silk worm is also referred to as the caterpillar stage of a silk moth now before entering into the next stage the next stage is called pupa so you see here this is the next stage which is pupa before becoming a pupa what it does is it starts waving a net to hold itself like have you ever seen spiders making nets so th that's more common right because you see it in your houses so in a similar way this silk worm it starts waving a net now how he makes this net by secreting a fiber protein so it is like how we secrete saliva similarly this silk worm also secretes some proteins and it moves itself in this pattern so it it will keep moving like this like this like this like this so gradually what happens and at the same time it is secreting some saliva like structure some saliva like protein so basically these proteins it it is forming a net like structure over a period of time and this net like structure over a period of time hardens in presence of air so when this net like structure initially it is just saliva but when that it is not actually saliva it is some protein which is like saliva so when that protein is exposed to air it starts becoming hard and this hardened protein later becomes the silk fiber so that that's how it happens now when it start making this net like structure it gradually forms this structure which is called cocoon so you see it has formed a covering around itself and inside this cocoon it now starts developing or it starts growing so it forms pupa so from the silk worm stage it enters into the pupa stage but basically this entire cocoon is formed by the silk worm so that is why we say that silk is obtained from silk worm now inside this cocoon from outside the cocoon will look like this and inside the cocoon would be the pupa and this pupa will then gradually keep growing and it will form the adult silk moth inside the cocoon itself and then once it becomes the adult moth so the adult moth will come out of the cocoon and from where do we get the silk fibers so the silk fibers are obtained from the cocoon once the adult silk worm has uh, once the adult silk moth has gone out of it so the silk fibers are obtained from cocoon because cocoon is nothing but it is made up of the silk fibers it is made up of that uh, protein which is secreted by the silk worm and that protein being exposed to air it becomes a hard structure which is called the silk fiber now different silk moths secrete different types of fibers now here the, right now i was giving example of the mulberry silk worm right so this type of silk worm they secrete a specific type of protein so that is why and the type of protein that is secreted by the silk worm decides the type of silk that will be obtained from this particular silk moth and that is why we get different types of silk like some of them are soft some are coarse some are shiny some are rough and that is what we get as kora silk kosa silk muga silk tussar silk etc so now you understand why do we have so many different types of silk in the market because there are many different types of silk worms as well and different types of silk worm secrete different types of proteins and these proteins later form silk fibers so the proteins actually decide what would be the type of silk so this is basically the life cycle of a silk moth so here you saw uh, the entire process where it started with an adult moth now once this adult moth comes out of the cocoon again the process continues again the adult moth will become capable of laying eggs and a female moth lays around hundreds of eggs at one time and then these eggs hatch larvae and these larvae they are called caterpillars or the silk worms and the process continues over and over again 
So now we will try to understand how exactly is silk processed? What do we do? How do we take care of silk worms? How do we get the silk from the silk worms? So sericulture is the name given to the process of rearing of silk worms. Like how we do rearing of sheep where we feed them properly, take care of them properly. In a similar way, we also rear silk worms because they, they give us something which is valuable to us. So how do we take care of the silkworms? So the first thing that has to be done is proper storage of eggs because see that's where the life cycle starts. So if the eggs are stored properly only then we get proper silkworms only we, then we get proper silk. So how do we store the eggs? When I say proper storage I mean that they should be stored at warm temperature and proper hygiene so that silkworms can be hatched from the eggs. So how is it exactly done? I mean, if you talk about the accurate process of uh, rearing, how it happens. So you can look at this picture. You have big trays and these trays are made up of bamboo. So the bamboo trays with some leaves, mostly mulberry leaves, because right now I am only talking about the mulberry silkworms, those silkworms which feed on the mulberry leaves. And, and in fact, these type of silkworms are one of the most common type of silkworm. So on this bamboo tray, we keep some mulberry leaves so that once the eggs are hatched and they become silkworms, then the silkworms can feed on those leaves. So that arrangement is done. Next, maintaining hygiene. That is again extremely important because without maintaining proper hygiene, uh, I mean, there are chances that maybe the silkworms will not get hatched or the silkworms will not be healthy. So in that case also we do not, we cannot expect that proteins, proper proteins will get secreted from that silkworm. So maintaining hygiene is very important in any kind of uh, uh, environment. So whether we take care of any type of animal or bird, hygiene maintenance is very, very important. Favorable temperature and humidity. Again, if the temperature becomes too low or too high, it uh, might affect the hatching of the eggs. It might affect the survival of the silkworms. So temperature and humidity should be optimum. So if you look at this picture, you can see that the people are preparing twig frames. So you see here, these are the twig frames. So these frames are being prepared where silkworm will spin their cocoon because what do we want? We are interested in the cocoons of the silkworms. So once the silkworm grows and become an adult moth, we just want to get all the cocoons. So that is why we have prepared this twig tree so that all the cocoons get attached to this twig. twig. And later we can just uh, take these twig frames with all the cocoons and that's how we can obtain silk from them. So that, that is the main idea and that is why this type of arrangement is done. So that's one thing. Secondly, the silkworm need to be provided with enough leaves so that they can feed on the leaves and once they grow, they will start waving the net. Now the net is being woven again, the same thing as I said, the silkworms will move in this pattern and that is how their secretions will keep forming the net like structures. So that net like structure will be formed on the twig frames which are being arranged here and once the silkworm grows further and gets detached from the cocoons so all the cocoons will be obtained on this twig frame. So that is the basic uh, concept or that is basically how sericulture is being done. Now the question is how is silk processed? How do we process the silk after this? Now once this is done, the cocoons which are obtained, they are then weighed. So you see, you obtained all the cocoons. So you just have the cocoons now, you, you don't have to deal with the silk worms now. So with these cocoons, what do you do? The silk fibers are taken out from the cocoon. So the cocoon is made up of those thin fibers, the thin secretions which have hardened due to exposure of air. So those silk fibers are now taken out and now these silk fibers are again like how you had wool fibers. Similarly, these are also thin thread like structures. So as you can see in this picture, this process of taking out silk fibers from the cocoon is known as reeling of silk. So what do you do in this? The cocoon is being exposed to the sun or the cocoon is being exposed to steam or water vapor and what happens? The fibers tend to separate and that's how you get separate individual 
uh, silk fibers, individual thread like structures by exposing the cocoon to a little bit of high temperature either in the form of sun or in the form of water vapor. Now once you get the silk fibers you are like almost done. Then these silk fibers are then woven to form the silk threads. Now once you have the silk threads I think then you all know what happens. The silk threads are then again woven to form the silk cloth. Now once you have the silk cloth that's it. Now you can make, you can just go to the tailor and get it dressed for a uh, suit or for a dress or for a sari. So that's how silk is obtained from silk worm. So you see uh, these type of natural, uh, these type of fabrics which when we go to a shop we feel that they are so expensive. So now just look at the process behind obtaining them, behind bringing them to the shop. So it involves a lot of effort, it involves a lot of time and that is why natural fibers are a lot more expensive when compared to artificial fibers. Now here we have not discussed about artificial fibers but however in uh, your class 8 we are going to talk about the artificial fibers also in detail for example nylon polyester so what are they and how do we uh, prepare them so all those things we will discuss in class 8 so with this we have reached towards the end of this lesson so let us quickly look at some of the questions question number one you must be familiar with the following nursery rhymes ba ba black ship have you any wool Mary had a little lamb whose fleece was white as snow. So now you see there are terms which we have discussed in this lesson, right? We have been talking all the time about wool. We, we have, while we were discussing about the wool animals, did I tell you about fleece? What is fleece? So let's see what are these. So now there are a few questions for you. Which parts of the black sheep have wool? So by now, I think we know this. So which part has the wool? The outermost covering, so ship has a woolly covering outside its body. So basically the skin, on the skin they have hair all over their body. So how do we get wool from the ship? The entire woolly covering along with a very thin layer of skin. What is meant by white fleece? What is the meaning of fleece? Fleece is nothing but the hair of the lamb, the woolly covering of the lamb. So fleece is nothing but the woolly covering of lamp. Question number two. The silk worm is a caterpillar, a larva. Choose the correct option. So now you have four options. What is a silk worm? Silk worm comes at in the life, it is just a stage in the life cycle of a silk moth. So which stage is it? It is a caterpillar because it is like a worm. It's, it's just like the caterpillar. And it is also a larva because it is the larval stage of the silk moth. So basically the correct answer would be both A and B. Because the silk worm is a caterpillar and it is the larval stage. Because the larva is hatched from the eggs. And that is how your silk worm is hatched. Question number three. Which of the following does not yield to wool? Yak. Camel, goat, woolly dog. So the right answer would be woolly dog because other than these all of them are wool animals. They are fat, they have a woolly covering on their body. Until and unless an animal has a woolly covering on, on its body, it will not be able to yield wool. Right? Question number 4. What is meant by the following terms? Rearing, shearing, sericulture. So rearing is all about taking good care of animals to obtain useful products from them. Now whether you talk about animals like cow which provides us milk and we get so many milk products. So it is important that we take care of the cow only then it will be able to give us good quality milk. Similarly if you talk about silk worms they provide us silk so it is important to rear them to feed them properly to give them proper temperature proper humidity so that they can uh, remain in hygienic condition they can lay their eggs properly. So that is called rearing taking overall care of animals feeding them properly maintaining proper hygiene. 
Shearing is the process of removing the woolly covering along with a thin layer of skin from the wool from the wool animals for example sheep or goat so for them when we want to obtain wool from them so the first step is always shearing where we just remove the layer of wool from their body now this process doesn't hurt them because the layer of skin which we are removing is a dead skin layer Sericulture is the name given to the process of rearing of silkworms. So in sericulture, as I shown you, showed you some time back that we make proper arrangements so that the silkworms are able to produce eggs so that the larva or the silk, uh, so that the silk moth is able to produce eggs and the silk worms get hatched from the eggs. So proper environment, proper temperature, moisture, hygiene, everything is maintained so that silk worms can be reared properly properly to obtain good quality silk. Question number 5. Given below is a sequence of steps in the processing of wool. Which are the missing steps? Add them. So the first step in the processing of wool is shearing where the woolly covering is removed from the animal's body. So first of all we have to receive the wool from the animal. After that what do we do? The next thing that needs to be done is washing it properly so that all the dirt and grease can be removed. So what is that process called? That is called scouring. Now once it is cleaned properly then it needs to be separated so that different types of wool, different texture of wool they are separated from each other. Next is the burr picking. Now in burr picking what happens? The bubbles which are present in the wool which makes its texture rough. So those burrs are found and then it is scrubbed and heated again so that the burrs can be removed and it, the wool can have a smooth texture. Now once that is done, done then the fibers are dried and dyed. So drying plus dyeing so it needs to be dried properly and it can also be dyed into different colors and once even that is done then you actually have wool fibers which are of different different colors now all you need to do is just rolling them into yarns and then send them to the market and that's how people will buy it people will make different types of uh, things different types of clothes different types of blankets using the wool question number six out of the following, which are the two terms related to silk production? So you, you have almost five terms here. Now what is sericulture? Sericulture is rearing of silk worms. So yes, this is related to silk production because silk worms produce silk. Floriculture. So floriculture is nothing related to silk. It has to do with flowers and flowers are not related to silk. Next is moriculture. What is moriculture? Moriculture is about cultivation of mulberries. So now do you think that mulberries are related to silk production? Yes, of course, because mulberries are food for a lot of silkworms. And those type of silkworms, they produce mulberry silk, which is a very common type of silk. So therefore, moriculture again is related to silk production. Apiculture is again related to the honeybees, so it is not related to silk production. And silviculture again is not related to silk production. So only sericulture and moriculture are related to silk production. Question number 7. Match column 1 with column 2. So you have a couple of uh, things in both column 1 and 2. So the first one is scouring. What is scouring? It is the second step in the process of wool, uh, in this entire process of wool processing. So what happens during scouring? The wool that is obtained from the animals that is washed and cleaned properly to remove all the dirt and grease. So this has to match with cleaning sheared screen. Mulberry leaves. What are mulberry leaves? They are the food for silkworm. A lot of silkworms feed on mulberry leaves. Yak. So yak is a wool yielding animal. Yes, of course it produces wool. Cocoon. What is cocoon? Cocoon is that uh, structure which is formed by the proteins secreted by the silkworms and this cocoon when uh, it hardens in presence of uh, air, this cocoon gives us silk fibers. So with this we have reached towards the end of this lesson on fibers and fabrics and I hope that you would have enjoyed knowing how do we obtain the natural wool and silk from different animals. Uh, so see you all in the next lesson. 
this video however there would be a next video coming up very soon so if you really like the video do not forget to share it with your friends and if you have a feedback for us do let us know in the comment section we will be more than happy to hear from you i'll see you all very soon with the next video till then stay home stay safe take care bye bye